Compliments of the season and thanks for joining us on Nationwide today. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Let's begin with the youths. As Niger joins the rest of the world to mark the International Youth Day, guests on Good Morning Niger have advocated promulgation of youth-based policies that will make them self-reliant. Butu Wamila completes the story. We'll bring you that report in the course of the bulletin. Still on the youths, an advocacy group Center for Youth in Sustainable Development has gathered a number of youths in Port Harcourt to X-ray the push factor to youth indulgence in satanic cultism, possible way out of the menace. Kingsley Amadri reports that the event which had panel discussion segment is in commemoration of the 2019 International Youths Day. The youth in Nigeria constitutes substantial part of the nation's demography. This perhaps necessitated the formulation of policies aimed at empowering them to become meaningful citizens. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria, while discussing investing in youths, call for the review of youths policies. Investing in young people requires very, very deliberate uh, steps to be taken, uh, especially to invest in human capital development, human capital development being health and education. Uh, you should be conscious of one, the capacity of the youth in whom you are investing, the passion of the youth in whom you are investing, and three, his zeal. Is he ready to run in that part before you channel resources? Guests emphasize the need for leaders to imbibe the culture of mentorship. They describe youths as the determinant of success in any society. We should be able to measure and uh, evaluate policies in short-term period, mid-term mid period, and long-term period, so that anyone that we're supposed to face out, we should face them out. But those youth with passion, like he has mentioned, who want to go to school, those with passion that want to engage into vocational skill, those with passion into other field of life, should be able to identify and then place in different positions. They called for the introduction of special scholarship for the youths in addition to involving them in the formulation of development policies. Education, the guest said, is critical in achieving success in any investment for the youths. In Abuja, Utwa Miller, NTA News. We apologize for that mix up. That was Good morning, Nigeria, on investing in youths. Still on the youths, an advocacy group Center for Youth in Sustainable Development has gathered a number of youths in Port Harcourt to extra the push factors to youth indulgence in satanic cultism, possible way out of the menace. Kingsley Amadi reports that event which had panel discussion segment is in commemoration of the 2019 International Youth Day. Of this youth program, focused attention on addressing the menace of cultism in educational institutions in Nigeria. The global theme for this year is transforming education. In River State, the concerns are that cultism is fast assuming intractable dimensions cutting across various facets of the education sector. We started to uh, put together this um, event. Um, we have in attendance student union leaders who we've brought together to talk about this menace, to find a lasting solution. The panelists, among whom are some victims of court-related incidents, examine the factors that stimulate students' indulgence in courtism and possible ways of addressing them. There is no ideology driving these people to join what they are joining right now. Today, courtism and corruption have taken over the society. And this is not done by our elders, it's done by the youth. Beyond the issue of courtism in educational institutions, the need to nip in the board, traces of court clashes and killings in some communities in the state were also highlighted with security agencies enjoined to step up their game while the elites strive to discourage tendencies that support such nefarious attitudes in the larger society. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajuri, NTA News. 
And now to education. In line with the federal government's resolve to use education as a tool for social economic development, Governor Udom Emanuel has inaugurated a 23-man central planning committee to organize an education summit before the commencement of the next school session. Susan Asukwa reports that the summit is to focus on human capacity building for sustainable transformation of persons and their society. Creating the committee, Secretary to the State Government, Dr. Emmanuel Ekouem said, the education summit has become imperative, considering the falling standards and deficiencies in the present education system in the state and the country in general. While explaining the need for the summit, Dr. Ekouem noted that it is part of Governor Dom Emmanuel's promise of changing the mindset of young graduates from aiming at white-collar jobs after graduation, as well as reviewing school curriculum to accommodate vocational subjects. This, the new era, is you graduating from college or from university or from polytechnic or college of education, as the case may be, and you become gainfully employed. You know what you can earn, you can create your own job. The Education Summit, which will hold before the beginning of the next school session, will focus on productive parenting, career path and success of citizens, competencies and skills, appropriate syllabus and curriculum for economic development, among others. The committee has the SSG as chairman, while Commissioner for Education, Commissioner for Science and Technology as members. Susan Asukwo, NTA News. Now to power generation, there are high hopes for commencement of work on the Mambila Hydro Power Plant in Taraba State, following a visit of Chinese experts on investigation to their state. Joseph Zana Gambu reports that the team also met with Governor Darius Dixon Ishako to intimate him on the mission. This visit by this team from the Nexum Bank of China on an inspection to the site for the construction of the much anticipated $6 billion Mambila Hydro Power Project will no doubt rekindle the hope of the people of the state and Nigerians 35 years after conception. The federal government had on the 5th of September 2018 signed an agreement with the Export and Import Bank of China who is to provide 85% funding for the project. The team leader, Gan Yongzi, informed Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku that the inspection visit to the dam site is an effort towards the successful takeoff of the project and seeks support and cooperation. We plan to go to the Mombrella site for technic investigation. We hope can get from your excellency and the Taraba people Tarba government uh, support. Overwhelmed by the visit, Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku said the Mambilla Hydro Power Project, when completed, holds great potentials for the state and assured of his administration's support throughout their stay for the successful completion of the assignment. This visit, I will also ask my staff here to follow you. Thank you. And we'll also arrange security for you mm. to go to Mandia. Governor Darius Dixon Ishaku expressed hope that the visit will lay to rest the long delay in the takeoff of the project. In Jalingo, Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Time now to join Hingino in Lagos for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome to Lagos. Stakeholders in the aviation industry say the sector will benefit immensely from the African continental free trade areas if airlines collaborate as well as strengthen infrastructural facilities. Michael Olale reports. Like the ECOWAS Free Movement Protocol, the African Continental Free Trade Area was conceived to expand intra-African trade through better harmonization and coordination of trade liberalization among 54 African countries. To achieve the mandates of this agreement, transportation no doubt plays a crucial role with the aviation industry in Nigeria expected to increase the influx of travelers above 17.23 million passengers recorded in 2018 according to the National Bureau of Statistics.
or do we have any airline that has that strength, that has that power to carry our flag beyond our airspace? The International Air Transport Association estimated that if about 12 key African countries can open up their airspace for increased connectivity, more than 150,000 jobs will be created an additional $1.3 billion generated in annual gross domestic products. How then can the aviation industry in Nigeria benefit from this expected surge of travelers across 54 countries? We need to build liquidity of our airlines uh, so that they can be able to acquire more aircraft, develop, expand their routes, uh, grow their businesses so that uh, they can favorably compete. When you see stretching domestic market, when you see the airlines, you improve competition. Once you put competition, prices will drop. And once prices drop, passengers will fly. And, you have more, and once, you have more, once, once you have passengers flying, services, services and frequencies will increase and improve. The benefits stakeholders believe are enormous if policies are strengthened to enable airlines and their operators thrive. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Wife of Lagos State Governor Dr. Ibijo Kesonwolu has underscored the need for Nigerians to embrace togetherness and mutual cooperation, saying such remains critical to engender peace and prosperity for the nation. This was the message of the wife of the governor at a special Idil Kabri celebration held at Lagos State Government House, Alausa Ikeja. Nosal Sula reports. Ibijo Keson Wolu said Nigerians must draw lessons from the significance of the festive season to always uphold peace, help the needy, and have abiding faith in God. The sacrifice is not only confined to our wealth and cattle, but it involves everything, including our lives. The day of sacrifice is not merely a celebration, but a great occasion to tender change and seek salvation. We therefore call for peace among the Muslims and the Christians of the world. Muslims and Christians in Nigeria in particular should see themselves as brothers and sisters. Appeal to all of us to go on our knees and pray, and pray to God you know, for peace in this country. We all need to come together in love celebrating all that God has given us and appreciating it. Muslim faithful were also urged to eschew all traits of disobedience to God. In Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. Nationwide continues after the commercial break. And event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College JOS is organizing a special two week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four week intensive course on non linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for pre premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws, Plateau State. Date 19th to 30th August 2019 for the course on protocol, event management and public relations. 19th August to 13th September 2019 for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee, 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College Jaws, training you to be the best you want to be. Peace building and the lessons of Idil Kabir celebration. This is the focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. The program every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. promises to be educative and incisive. Don't miss it. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices 
corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is rank and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide. Weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first. Get it fresh. Thanks for staying with us. Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar, has called on politicians to differentiate between politics and governance and support government for even development. The Sultan was speaking when he led his councillors and other traditional rulers in the state on Salah homage to Governor Amin Wazir Tambwal at the Government House in Sokoto. Abdurrahman Usman Jibrila reports. The Sultan said it is now time to come together and support policies and programs of government for the development of the country. The Sultan reminded leaders of the need for every stakeholder to play his role in the governance process. He called for more ways of creating opportunities, especially among youth, to be self-reliant. The Sultan assured of their continued support and cooperation in ensuring peace, unity and love among Nigerians. Governor Amin Waziri Tambwal commended the Sultan's role in strengthening and preaching peace across the country. He called for more support from the traditional and religious institutions towards ending the current insecurity across the country. Governor Tambwal said currently the state government is working with Indonesia towards implementing youth and women empowerment programs to reduce restiveness. He commended the role of the Sultanate Council in areas of health, education, zakat and endowment, and fight against polio and other childhood killer diseases. The Sultan was accompanied on the visit by his senior councillors and all 86 district heads across Sokoto State. In Sokoto, Abraham Smanjibrila, NTA News. Celebration. The peace and tranquility between the Hausa Fulani community in Abia State has encouraged them to organize a traditional Kokawa event to mark the Idel Kabir Festival in Umwaya. Young Hausa Fulani men ensured that they did not miss much staying far away from home as they reenacted a scenario playing out in the ancest ancestral communities in their faraway abode. <laughs> That is a challenge from this warrior to anyone among his pairs that wants to engage him in the stick fight or traditional wrestling, Kokawa. It didn't take long, though, for another person to dare him, and this encounter, watched by thrilled spectators, ensued. <laughs> To, uh, to play this role so that we will show our culture uh, why we are in this world. That is why we are in this world. People who are in Ibia State, here in Imo State, and Ibia, Ibia State, they are showing their own culture as the Bihausa. We thank God say, we get chance, we get right. We are all in Nigeria. With the existing cordial relationship with their host in Ibia State, the Hausa community plans a better organized event next Sala. Sala homage continues in Dutse Jigawa State as Emir of Dutse Al Haji Nuhu Mohammed Sanusi called for strict punishment for rapists in the state. Our Lawa Kazari tells us more. The Sala homage was celebrated in a low key manner at the official residence of the governor due to early morning rains in Dutse. 
The Emir of Dusi Alaji Nuhu Muhammad Sanusi commanded the giant strides recorded in the agricultural sector and peace reigning in Jigawa State. The Emir, however, decries the increase in the rate of rape cases while appreciating traditional rulers for maintaining peace in the state. The governor reminded local government chairmen of their responsibility as chief security officers of their areas. Meanwhile, Salah festivities continue peacefully across Jigawa State with the traditional Daba to the admiration of all, including the non indigents. <laughs> Jigawa State consists of five Emirates from Dus A, Awal Muhammad Kazauri, NTA News. Two other matters now. Speaker at Nasarawa House of Assembly, Ibrahim Balarebe Abdullahi, has commended NTA for adhering to professional ethics. He gave this commendation during a visit of NTA Lafia Management to the Speaker in Nasarawa. Ali Tijani Mohammed reports. Speaker Ibrahim Balarebe Abdullah emphasized the significant role of NTA nation building while calling on journalists to continue to adhere strictly to professional ethics in the interest of development. The speaker says legislators are happy with the coverage of their activities and pledges for more partnership. Our success story as a house will not be complete without uh, mentioning NTA. We've been collaborating together. He's been of great assistance to us as Honorable House. And I can assure you that we shall continue to partner with you. We shall continue to work in synergy in ensuring that we take our states and the country to the next level. Jam manager Hamza Musa Makarfi says NTA will remain committed towards coverage of the assembly through news and programs contents. Hamza Makarfi commends the state assembly for projecting the yearnings and aspirations of the citizens of the state. As NTA uh, resident in Latvia, we owe a duty to get across to uh, stakeholders so that the very essence of governance is carried to the people. He urges the speaker to build on the solid foundation he has led so far. In Latvia, Ali Utijani Mohamed, NTA News. And out to security, new commandant NSCDC Rivers State Muktao Lawal has hit the ground running with the arrest, parade and parade of suspected crude oil thieves as well as impoundment of trucks. Robin Singh Deratiede covered the maiden press briefing. Eight trucks loaded with crude oil concealed in sacks arrested at different locations within River State in the last one month were paraded before newsmen. The commandant also paraded 12 suspects in connection with the crime. He says it's resolved to decimate the operations of oil vandals, protect government critical facilities, and motivate officers through welfare schemes are not negotiable. Three long trucks fully loaded with suspected adulterated AGO were also arrest arrested. These ones are currently at the command exhibit. Mokta Lawal appealed for cooperation from members of the public to effectively secure the state from vandals. Commandant Mukta Lawal was posted to River State on the 29th of July 2019 from the FCT command in Portacot, Robinson, Deratayde, and Tienius. Time now to join Felicia in our JOS Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Felicia. Hello Elizabeth and welcome to JOS. Appreciation of effort is a tried and tested method of motivation which when applied in human endeavor brings the best in people. So it was when Operation Safe Haven hosted its officers and men to a Salah feast together with plateau communities to not only motivate the troops but also sustain the existing peaceful atmosphere in the states. Mary Domtur reports. The Salah feast drew both military and paramilitary agencies as well as key players in the peace building process in Plateau State. The occasion provided both with an avenue to relax and celebrate Eid Kabir, which was marked peacefully in the state. Commander Operation Save Haven, Major General Augustin Agundu thanked the people of Plateau State for their tolerance and understanding, which has brought the much needed peace being enjoyed, and reiterated the command's resolve to ensure peace thrives in the state. It's a collaborative effort with all the security agencies here on the plateau. 
um, we were able to hold meetings and then we re-strategize on how we are going to approach this particular Salah holiday. We are very happy that all the strategy we put in place have come out on the positive. Other speakers at the event extolled the leadership qualities of the commander and commended the OPSH for their efforts. It is not only for the same plan to stay. Its responsibilities have extended to Kaduna and Bochi states. This is a credit for you and we continue to pray for your success. That your effort in defending your fatherland shall never be in vain, as millions of Nigerians, irrespective of tribe or religion, are praying fervently for you. The Operation Safe Haven is a military tax force set up to maintain peace, was established in 2010. In Jos, Mary Domtur, NTA News. Towards alleviating the water needs of his community, a civil servant, John Jugujang, has inaugurated a motorized borehole in Danye community of Jos South local government area of Plateau State. The community has suffered acute water shortage for long, and John Jugujang, secretary to the head of service of the Federation, and his wife, Mrs. Vo Jang, a staff of NTA headquarters, facilitated the project. Dung Chung has more. The sinking of the motorized borehold will significantly improve the quality of life and the socio-economic development of the society. John Jangjugu said the provision of this basic social amenity is born out of his desire to assist his community have good portable drinking water for their daily needs. It is for the good of the community, not just my family. So they should guard it jealously. I will call on my people to make sure that anything that should be done to make sure this project is safeguarded should be done. Members of the community express gratitude for the provision of the motorized borehole. We as community leaders here, we want to make sure that this project lasts for a time that is supposed to last. We have been drinking the well water, the drainage or from the river. We get some cholera, typhoid from that uh, river water. But now we really appreciate them, we appreciate the facilitator. They all place their unalloyed support for more social amenities in just South local government area, in Jos, Dung Chung, and T News. That's our contribution from Joss. It's back to you, Elizabeth, in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Felicia. Today, the world celebrates the uniqueness and difference of left-handed persons in a predominantly right-handed world. Benny Adams takes us through the experiences of some of these special persons. Olua Tobi Tijani is a hair stylist at Wuse Market in Abuja. She uses her left hand to do her duties. She has never thought of using her right hand. She shares her experiences surviving in a world dominated by right-handers. My, my teacher noticed I was using left. They called my mom for parents' teachers' meeting and told her. And she's like, okay, let them try. If they can succeed in stopping it because she has already tried everything. I eat with it, even from, right from start. She said she has tried, so they should try and make me stop. Then after a while, a whole time I didn't write in school because I could not use my, my right hand to write. Then they now called another meeting again and the teacher is like, she too should try though and they couldn't stop me. My mom decided to let me continue using it now since it's not as if it's a bad thing. Olua Tobi is among 10 to 15 percent of the world's population whom are believed to have exceptional capabilities with a high intelligence quadrant of over 140 than the right-handed people. Some of the great left-handed people include four out of the last five of United States presidents like Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. Other great personalities include the world's richest woman and media personality. Oprah Winfrey. 
NTA also has its own share of left-handed persons, like the business editor, Lea Katung Babatunde. And by primary two, my teacher was left-handed, Mr. Sambo, he's late now. And so he just gave us all the encouragement we needed at that time. We were three in the class who were left-handed. And um, he was supportive and never forced it on anybody. It, it, it boosted my confidence and always made me want to do extra on what is expected of me because I wouldn't let anybody say she's left-handed, that's why she failed. So with that at the back of my mind, I make sure that I do much more than what other people are, are, are giving out productively. It was first observed in 1976, meant to promote awareness of inconveniences facing left-handers in the world of predominantly right-handers. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. Let's now shift our attention to health. The Ebony State Minister of Health has confirmed the death of one person from a yellow fever outbreak at a village in Iji. Council area, Neka Oko reports. Although it has been reported in some sections of the media that no fewer than 16 persons have died from the outbreak, the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Daniel Umezurike, dismissed the claim, insisting that only one death has so far been confirmed out of the nine reported cases of which one person has been treated and discharged, while the rest are currently receiving treatment at Ndungele Health Center. General Hospital Iboko and Abakaliki. The only one that I can tell you authoritatively that was confirmed is one. Confirmed laboratory wise and clinically wise. To contain further spread of the disease and limit its impact, the State Ministry of Health, in collaboration with Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, and the World Health Organization, WHO, initiated what it calls three-level response, comprising active case management, active case search, and prevention. Already we've notified the WHO and the NCDC. We are re respecting at least three million doses of vaccine. Uh, we have strengthened uh, surveillance, we have strengthened routine immunization. The state of government have distributed synthesized treated nets to all the affected uh, areas. Yellow fever is an acute viral hemorrhagic disease transmitted by infected Aedes mosquitoes. In Abakaliki, Neka Oko, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Time now to join Abubakar Mohamed Musa in Maiduguri for more reports. Hello, Musa. It's good to see you, Elizabeth, and thank you for joining us in Meduguri. Troops of the Nigerian Air Force have been commended for a successful outing of the Operation Green Sweep, meant to cripple the activities of Boko Haram insurgents in the northeast. Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar boosted their morale in a message to a Salah luncheon held at 105 Composite Group Meduguri. Pauline Kujivana has the details. It has been the tradition of the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, since assumption of duty to celebrate every festivity with frontline troops to foster comradeship, oh. lasting detention in them, and reassure them of government commitment to providing required support for successful mission against the insurgents. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, represented by the Commander Air Task Force Operation Lafia Dole, Air Commander Operation Namdi Amadi, commended the troops for the resilience as well as personal and collective sacrifices made to the successes achieved recently under the Operation Green Sweep. I'm sure that uh, we'll continue to achieve victory. I know that we can and we are doing all within our capacity to ensure that peace returns here. Speaking on behalf of the Air Task Force Commander, Air Commodore Precious Amadi, the Commander 105 Composite Group, Wing Commander Doyun Laha, appreciated the resolution of the Chief of Air Staff for consistently sharing with them during operational and social activities. The recent posting of more regiment personnel to beef up our security and more advanced equipment, it is indeed a morale booster. The Chief of Air Staff Salah Luncheon with troops also has civilians from the host community. In Meduguri, Pauline Kujevana, NTA News. 
The emirs of the Kwa and Bama Emirates in Borno State have applauded the Buhari-led administration and state governor for their efforts in the restoration of peace in their domains. This followed the celebration of Eid al-Kabir with other returnees to the areas after five years of being away from their domains. Kaigama Mustafa Shehu reports. that followed the two record fairs conducted peacefully in both Dikwa and Bama Emirates. Chef of Dikwa, Mohammed Shah Masadi II, in a silent message to the congregation, charges people to have courage in the face of challenges of insecurity which will soon be over. Bama was one of the most hit by Boko Haram, who occupied the town in 2014 before it was liberated by the Nigerian military. 7% of the town was destroyed by the insurgents and was rebuilt by the North State government with the support of humanitarian partners and NGOs. The monarch, Kari Umar Ibn Ibrahim El Kenemi, enjoined his people to return home as peace has been restored, town rebuilt, and security enhanced. We want to seize this opportunity to express our gratitude to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the coming to the re aid of the people in arresting this situation and restoring back to normalcy and giving us the hope of returning back to our domain. The threat for lasting peace to reign in the state and the country at large. In my degree, Kegawa Mustafa Show, NTN News. Following Governor Babagana Umar Azulum's directive for all local government staff to return to their various places of work with immediate effect, an emergency meeting of local government secretaries was summoned in Meduguri. Maimuna Garba has the report. The meeting aimed at ensuring strict compliance with the directive of Governor Babagana Umar Azulum for local government staff to return to their various working places, considering the significant peace being enjoyed in the state. The chairman of Borno State Local Government Service Commission, Senator Kakama Lemiale, said one of the ten packed agenda of Governor Babagana is to reposition the civil service for optimum performance and called on the secretaries to ensure they report any act of absenteeism and indiscipline to the commission. On the issue of security, the chairman maintained that adequate measures have been put in place, adding that the present administration of Governor Zulum is committed to improving the welfare of civil servants. We should personally go out uh, and monitor and assess uh, the level of compliance. All the challenges in terms of security, in terms of accommodation, in terms of barrows, in terms of furniture, etc., et will be addressed. While assuring to comply with the directive, secretaries of the local government in Northern Borno lamented that lack of conducive working environment and insecurity compelled them to leave their working places. Secretaries of local government in Southern Borno promised to consolidate on efforts of Governor Babagana Umara in transforming the civil service. Chairman Secretary's Forum Borno State, Dr. Shatima Maina Mohammed, commended the steps taken by the governor and assured to justify the confidence reposed in them. In my degree, my Munagaraba, NTA News. And that's our contribution from my degree. Time now to take a commercial break to bring you more reports in just a moment. Protocol and event management are special skills which can only be acquired through training and experience. NTA TV College Jaws is organizing a special two-week course on protocol, event management, and public relations to upgrade the capacities of practitioners. The course will equip participants with modern skills, techniques, and international best practices in protocol, event management, and public relations. Also, a special four-week intensive course on non-linear editing techniques will run concurrently. The course will expose participants to modern techniques and technologies of non-linear editing. Take advantage of this course to hone your professional skills for premium packaging of your programs and reports. The venue for both courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA Television College, near Old Government House, Rayfield, George, Plateau State. Date, 19th to 30th August, 2019, for the course on protocol, event management, and public relations. 19th August to 13th September, 2019, for basic non-linear editing techniques. Course fee, 100,000 Naira only per participant. Accommodation inclusive. For more information, please call 0803-314-4383 or 0806-980-9807. NTA TV College, JAWS. Training you to be the best you want to be. 
peace building and the lessons of Idil Kabir celebration. This is the focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. The program every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. promises to be educative and incisive. Don't miss it. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide. Weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first. Get it fresh. Glad to know that you're still there. Now, as part of its corporate social responsibility, the headquarters of the Nigerian Air Force in Dara has taken its medical outreach to Sandamu, local government area of Katsina State. Sani Bashiru has more. The two-day medical outreach by the headquarters of the Nigeria Air Force is part of preparations to unveil the ultra-modern reference hospital of the Air Force in Daura. The medical outreach covers free consultation of patients, deworming of more than 2,000 children, immunization for children with vitamin A, distribution of eyeglasses and treated mosquito nets. Director of Public Health Services of the Nigeria Air Force, Group Captain Ali Tanku, said the medical outreach targets more than 25,000 beneficiaries in the local government area of Kazana State. Ali Tanko also said for those whose ailments require referral will be referred to the Nigeria Air Force Reference Hospital, which is expected to be inaugurated soon. Some beneficiaries commended the Nigeria Air Force for the gesture. From Sandamu local government area of Kazina State, Sani Basiru, NTA News. Now to revenue generation. Nasara government is diversifying revenue sources towards meeting expectations of the people on massive infrastructure development and improving their social well-being. Abubakar Usma Akwanga reports that the new focus is with collaboration with the government and tax appeal tribunal. The state government is highly determined to improve its revenue base to meet critical needs of the people and will not relent in grabbing offers for enhanced revenue collection. Governor Abdullah Sule says people of the state should cultivate the positive habit of consistently paying taxes. This tribunal is not only about passing judgments on issues related to tax, but it's on encouraging other taxpayers to follow the process and to be educated and to understand the importance of uh, tax payments. Officials of the Tax Appeal Tribunal say the organization which is empowered by an act will continue to identify taxpayers and their status in meeting basic tax conditions and enforcing compliance where necessary. In Lafia, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News.
Let's now take you to Benue State, where the state government says all is now set for the state to take advantage of the United States Agency for International Development, USAID's newly launched feed, the Future Niger Activity, to nurture a business enabling environment that will promote private sector investment in agriculture. It is a five year, $15.7 million agribusiness investment program, which is expected to reach at least 5,000 small and medium enterprises nationwide, thereby expanding opportunities for borrowers and lenders. Representative of the Benue State Governor, Samuel Autumn, says the MOU has already been signed with a feed, the future Nigeria activity, with an office in the States. His Excellency has realized that if over 80% of Benue State indigenous are in agriculture, and then the only way you can impact that state is to impact that number. Yep. And so he sees that the way that that can happen is for those 80% farmers to have a good return on their produce to guarantee that have a good market. He has also realized that to have a good market, it means that there will be a constant offtake. For constant offtake to take place, you must have a processing arrangement on ground. That's industrialization. He realized that he cannot industrialize the generators, so he must solve the problem of power. We are, we are deeply concerned about the future, which is agriculture. And the governor who has emphasized the back-to-land program, which is working effectively, is uh, with this, what we have in place here, is just act. It's a welcome development. is something that we are really uh, happy to partner with the American government. Agribusiness investment activity will be implemented by cultivating new frontiers in agriculture and CNFA in six other states of Kaduna, Kirby, Delta, Eboin, Reeve, Cross River, and Niger. Indigenous language is unique to people's identity as it can conveys their cultural heritage as well as help to advance cultural values and tradition. To prevent indigenous languages in Nigeria from going into extinction, the National Institute for Cultural Orientation organized a lecture to preserve indigenous languages. Adebola Ogulano has details. Our research revealed that about 527 different local languages are spoken across 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria, but only 84 of them are still in use to date, while other languages are on the verge of extinction. National Institutes for Cultural Orientation organized a six-week lecture for people within two division cantonments in Ibado to maintain national cohesion. My name is, I will speak it in Igbo. Aambu, Lolo, Omolola, Adibayo. From my language, Hausa, I can now communicate in Igbo and at least in Yoruba. Orukomini, Adamu Mustafa. I learned the Yoruba national anthem. That national anthem said, the organizers are of the opinion that if a language is lost, the people are lost. If in the barracks, the, the members of it, the people in these barracks understand each other's language, there will be good neighborliness and then there will be unity in the country and then peace will come. They therefore urge governments at all levels to give Nigeria's indigenous language a boost as a way of preserving such languages from disappearing. In Ibadan, Adibola Ogulano, NTA News. A break back and snout. Stay with us. We'll be right back. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. 
These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. With heavy hearts, but total submission to the will of God Almighty, we announce the passing on to glory of our beloved brother, husband, father, uncle, cousin, and nephew, Akinloye Olusegun Joseph Oyebanji, who slept in the Lord on July 27, 2019. Burial arrangements, Christian Wake on August 15 at Akinloye's residence, Kionigmi, a sin local government area of Kwara State, at 5 p.m. Funeral service and Thanksgiving hold on August 16 at All Saints Anglican Church. Okionigbe at 10 a.m. before interment at the church spirit ground at Okionigbe in Kwara State. Rest in peace, Akinloye Oyebanji. Signed, Olubumi Oyebanji for the family. Thanks for staying with us. Ebola drugs show 90% survival rate in breakthrough trial, just as Mozambique goes firm on digital snooping. For these and more other training news across the globe, Justin Bemwim will put us through. Hello and welcome. Scientists have said Ebola may soon be a preventable and treatable disease after a trial of two drugs showed significantly improved survival rates. Reports have it that the year-long Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo has so far killed at least 1,800 people. Four drugs were trialed on patients in the DR Congo, where there is a major outbreak of the virus. The trial in DR Congo has saved roughly 90 percent of the patients who received them early in the course of infection. Health officials say the drugs will now be used to treat all patients with the disease in DR Congo. And members of parliament in Mozambique have revised the country's penal code to criminalize digital snooping. Anyone who now gains access to phones, computers or other gadgets belonging to someone else without permission will face up to two years in prison. For those who illegally produce, sell, or distribute non-public information obtained from such devices without permission, the penalty will be a jail term of up to five years. In the meantime, as the ECOWAS Joint Mission Meeting comes to an end, the ECOWAS Parliament has pointed out that six member states are yet to ratify the ECOWAS Protocol on the fight against corruption. And this was disclosed at the end of the delocalized meeting of the Joint Committee on Political Affairs, Peace, Security and Arms, Gender, Women Empowerment, Social Protection, Legal and Judicial Affairs in Ouagadougou. From the report presented by the chairman of the committee, Senegal, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Republic of Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, and Cape Verde are yet to ratify, asking them to do so to fast track the process. And that's it from here. Thanks for watching. In our to sports, President Buhari charges Team Nigeria to dominate at the 12th African Games in Morocco. Ayodiji Makinde 